So we're recording now. So welcome to week five discussion. Uh, this discussion will be an interesting discussion on some of the core concepts of marketing. I'm hoping I will have all of your attention during the full course of the discussion and you'll try to engage as much as you can so that there is uh, no one-way communication. So STP, that is an acronym. Can someone tell me what that acronym means? Anyone? Segmenting, training, and positioning. Yeah, just the T. I Google no, it. Yeah, segmenting, targeting, and positioning. Yes, yes. Yeah, right. Sorry, targeting. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, well done, Yashwan. So segmenting, targeting, and positioning. These are the core concepts. These are the core uh, function of marketing. Before, in order to reach or create value, which we discussed in our last week. Last week, we were talking about creating value. What is lifetime value? Creating customer lifetime value, offering customer the value. In order to create value, the three steps or the three key, three keys. Uh, uh, there are lots of noise coming. Can you please all turn the microphone off? Yeah. Everyone is requested to turn your microphone off. And if you have any question, use the reactions uh, icon where you will have uh, raising your hand. So you can raise your hand through the reactions button. So anyway, as I was saying, in order to create value, offer value to the desired customer, the first and foremost task of a marketer is to be able to understand the segment, market segment that they're going to offer the product. Then comes targeting. And targeting will be that uh, how exactly you offer that value to those uh, customers. And then finally, it's gonna be positioning. The positioning will be then position your brand in a manner that is consistent with your identity. How would you like to be seen into consumers' um, eye? So that's what we're going to explore in detail. There are lots of different um, interrelated concepts. We will be talking about those in detail today. So the objectives. These are the key objectives of our discussion today. Be able to define the three steps of target marketing market segmentation, target marketing, and market positioning. Understand the major basis for segmenting consumer and business market. We will be talking about in business market as well. Because one thing we need to keep in mind, there is a B2B market and a B2C market that exist as well. Can someone explain that to me, please? What's the difference between B2B and B2C? Just so that we so on, do our uh, business to business, uh, like. Uh, some businesses buy from other businesses for their manufacturing or other purposes. And some businesses buy from others to sell to the customers, that is B2C. Okay, can you give me an example? Uh, like for example, let's say Chillox. Chillox uh, sells to their customers. And if, you, if we talk about cat, uh, they, they buy their needs from a business to manufacture more goods uh, not for the customers directly what, what's the second example uh, the second example was about cat 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 okay technology. Uh, right. they, uh, they buy their products from another business to manufacture more and more yeah so they don't directly sell to the customers yes that's right Okay, so good example, maybe an, an easiest example that when you will be buying a chair from a furniture store, you are a B2C customer from business to customer. But when BRAC University will be buying a chair from a furniture store, BRAC is a B2B customer because BRAC University is using the chair 
to further sell their product, which is their education to the students. So the students will come, they will buy courses from Rack University, and then they will sit in those chairs. So that's the difference between B2B and B2C. B2B is business to business and B2C is business to consumer. That is the two different types of market that is uh, out there. So we'll be talking about those. So let us first understand the concept of, uh, to begin with, maybe try to unpack the concept start with simple example like Procter and Gamble maybe you can see lots of different products Procter and Gamble or Unilever if we see all of these like you know they have different products as you can see in this image they have you know shaving um, kit they have shampoo they have like you know uh, chips they have like you know batteries they have lots of different products these are all under the umbrella of Procter and Gamble if you look at Bangladesh, Bangladeshi market, we see, I don't know, maybe Boshundara groups, maybe Square Pharmaceuticals, and they have lots of different products. They sell multiple brands within the same product category for a variety of products. Brands feature a different mix of benefits and appeal to different segments. So when a marketer or a business is selling their product to multiple different consumer group that is one important thing to keep in mind that you're not selling to the same consumer group there are multiple different types of consumer group that exist uh, so with that, we will start with the concept of segmentation. Market segmentation. Dividing a market into distinct groups with distinct needs, characteristics, or behavior who might require separate products or marketing mixes. So in essence, it is all about dividing the whole market into smaller slices, smaller clusters and group them based on some unique characteristics variables. So what are those variables? We will be unpacking those in our today's discussion. But as you can see in this image, like, you know, you will have different types of consumers and you'll have to understand their needs. By the way, can someone tell me, what is this image refers to? Or from where, or what are these characters? So the Lego characters? Lego. Not Lego. Is there, is there a parent here? Is someone has a child here? It's on Mary? No. Okay. So you may not be, you may not have been exposed. So this is like a, a game which has taken the whole world by storm, especially little kids. It's called Roblox. Um, it's, it's a game. It's a like you know social sharing game so the kids like even my old daughter she, like my, my only daughter she is like you know like crazy with this game so they can like play this game online with their friends so kids at the age of six seven eight especially at the target market so they're like going crazy and they have different uh ways to you know uh i guess tap into this market as well like they sell you know online coins like you know with those coins the kids they can actually change their characters dress and buy different things so my my daughter she just eats my brain every week for like you know this virtual currency through which to be able to buy stuff. okay we'll mute sumaya so that uh, she's not allowed so anyway segmentation that's what segmentation is now it may sound easier but we need to look into the different ways we can do the segmentation but anyway this is the model that we just need to keep in mind as marketing professionals that you first segment that means you slice your market into smaller pieces slice and dice the whole market into smaller pieces identify the basis for segmentation and then you target the market, develop measures of segment attractiveness, select the target markets. 
because once you identify that, well, this are, these are the segments that where we're going to offer our product or service, then you develop specific targeted promotion or ways to do that. And finally, positioning is also another important step where you need to build your identity into your consumer's mind. How would you like to be perceived by your consumers? How do you want to be seen by your consumers as a brand? Do you want to see yourself as a low cost or high cost or low quality or high quality and different other types of, of perception consumers may develop? So you just need to create that perception into consumer's mind. So we will be talking about uh, segmentation first, types of market segmentation. So primarily, there are four different segmentations that exist. Geographic segmentation, psychographic segmentation, demographic segmentation, and behavioral segmentation. So let's get started with each of these one by one. The geographical segmentation. So as the name suggests, marketing mixes are customized geographically. So this is perhaps the simplest form of segmentation when you will be segmenting your consumers based on different geographical factors. And that would be the world region or country, state and city, city size, neighborhood, density, climate, based on all of these different factors, you will be segmenting. So depending on where your consumers reside or which is their geographic location, based on that, you will divide them. Now, the image here is a, of a brand called IKEA. Can someone tell me why have I used this image in this to discuss the geographic segmentation? All right, I'll make that easier for you. So IKEA is some, it's, it's a, it's a Swedish uh, brand. Furniture. Yes. So predominantly IKEA is popular within the European countries because IKEA is, uh, they, they come with furniture, which is in a knockout format. Knockout means, you know, in, in like, you know, boxes, which you will have to unbox and you will have to fix the furniture by yourself. And also the furniture are very good for, smaller houses like you know when you have smaller houses ikea furniture are great because with smaller you know, uh, okay all right some people need to keep the internet etiquette and keep microphones off all the time fatima uh, farhana zinia please make sure to uh keep your microphone off so as i was saying ikea so IKEA predominantly advertises within the European market because in Europe, the houses or the climate and everything is suitable for IKEA product. They would not advertise IKEA product in the subcontinent market because subcontinent market, it's, it's the nature or the market or the climate is different. It's very hot and humid. And there's lots of like, you know, so these are some of the problems for which the furnitures in this part of the world will be different compared to that. Recently, IKEA furnitures are starting to go in prominence in like you know, Australia and other countries as well, but predominantly it's very suitable for the European market, especially for smaller homes, but because in Europe, like you know, the homes are smaller. Uh, so geographic segmentation, as we have understood, is purely based on the geographic factors. So from a local context, maybe in Bangladesh context, we can think about when in Bangladesh, the different brands will be selling their product to a particular zone or area, um, considering that area. Uh, that will be a geographic segmentation. Can someone give me a local example of geographic segmentation, maybe in, with a real product? Sir, this might be a very local, that there is a soap called Chaka Bal Shaba. Okay. That, that is not sold in city areas. That is sold in 
village areas and this is very popular among them so they do not actually try to sell those soaps in city okay, areas. for example uh, there's another one pocha pocha shaban na ki jano ekta chilo na there's a like so these are yes these are some soaps for washing you know clothes and everything and these are i think these are almost obsolete these days no one who uses like chaka bolso maybe i mean again maybe in the in the village well, that's a good example so depending on your like you know you can segment the bangladeshi market based on like you know whether it's urban rural village market you will see that there are some products which are particularly targeted in the village market and you will not find those in the local market no one would like you know do a segmentation in the village of of like you know smart phones maybe or the expensive smart phones so uh, depending on those you will you will predominantly look into the market based on factors which are re related to people's geographic location okay next up is um uh, okay name several examples of product for which you need uh which need would vary on a geographical basis so maybe just a quick um brainstorming uh climate is a major factor right when it comes to the climate as we can see that climate is becoming a factor so based on climate think about examples of product i've already given you one like ikea was one example but can someone give me more examples sir you in our country you cannot buy snowboards of course but in other areas uh, like uh, in kashmir in india you can buy that because there are ice and you can skate there yes simple example is that that's a good one so obviously snowfall and ice and you know these are not the thing in bangladesh in bangladesh you will not find that but there are products specific products you will find in those countries like you know where snowfall is a regular thing so yes purely based on the climate you can easily sell those products to those countries where climate is a major factor good example okay moving on next one is the demographic factor so demographic factors who can tell me what is demographic factor okay simply put the word demography suggest it's all about gen age gender family size family life cycle income race occupation education religion generation nationality all of these these are part of your demographic factor and based on that you can easily target the market uh, or segment the market for instance looking at this image what type of demographic segmentation is reflected by this ad foreign countries uh, no. sorry say kids, again Rosa. kids product kids yes, product. of course kids it's purely it's segmenting the like you know the age group is obviously it is for the zero to two Thanks. yes so you can have if you consider age as a variable within that you can have different sub categories right like age variable you will have maybe birth to year 2 maybe 3 to years 4 5 then you can have 7 to 10 or you know you can have as many as you can depending on what the product is as in this image we can see this is predominantly for kids it's a toddler like you know the age between like you know 2 to 4 so this is the age where you can specifically target this type of like you know as you can see the type of like you know uh, product uh, she is holding 
I'm assuming it's a, it's a girl, but also, although it's just like wearing, like, you know, the dress up is a bit uh, mixed up, but still uh, you would think that um, what, what, what are the product is. So purely depending on whatever the product is, I mean, you can, uh, whatever the consumer's age group is, you can differentiate the consumer. And you can pick other variables as well. You can pick about family life cycle. That could be another variable. Like, you know, if, uh, if it's a, uh, like, you know, young couple who are only recently married, they will have different family. Uh, the ones with a big family, maybe family of two, three, they will have different family size. Yeah, Yashan, go ahead. Sir, uh, what is upscale and downscale? Uh, I saw it in the image. Uh, is it something related to marketing as well or business? Uh, upscale and downscale. Oh, no, look, it's just, I mean, product wise, like in, if you want to uh, upscale means it's a bit uh, pricey, like the expensive. It's a little more expensive going on the expensive side. And downscale means the product quality. I mean, price wise. It's just like that. So right. you may segment the market according to that. Maybe, as you can see in the upscale category, uh, the products are slightly expensive than the downscale. So maybe you can even have in within the same age group, you can have people of different, like you know, income, like you know, income levels. So within this one image, we can see two different types of segmentation. One could be people or family with higher income and family with a bit like, you know, in the moderate income level. So that's probably the distinction. Right. So, so these are, you're welcome. So these are all the important factors. Occupation, what are the occupation? Like you are specifically in a segment, right? You're all a student maybe. Some of you are working professional, or maybe you have just stepped into the corporate life, or some of you are experienced. Nationality could be factor, generation could be factor, religion could be factor. So all of these are part of your demographic segmentation variable. So demographic variable, purely people's, the demographical factors, which identifies people's belonging, where they belong. Okay, uh, Tom, I go ahead. Sir, uh, sir, a demographic factor of uh, Chilo Holo, nationality, and um, geographic holo is totally defined on the geographic region. So, I mean, the um, Praner case strategy with Horiami, Pran to Janante Bivino product, India te export code, Jugal Bangashi available now. Mm -hmm. Bangashi is a product, Jugal about India te available now. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Praner frozen kiss of foods as the Jugula Kolkata market available, Jeta Bangladesh market and so shake it. Man, it can nationality the focus of it, like a geography report focus of it. My take a segmented Bashaji the bully. Yeah, of course, it's geographical because it's purely it is the geographical location. Jeta, these are all being sold either in the Bangladesh market or in the Indian market. So they're segmenting the market based on geographical even like you know lots of pran products these are sold in australia as well we buy the the pran products here in australia as well and these products are priced differently for instance the pran spices jagura moshla that you buy in bangladesh and i have purchased that in bangladesh as well they are priced separately and when it comes to the australian market the price goes a little different like up or down whatever that is mostly it's up so they have segmented, like, you know, these are the geographic segmented. There's nothing about nationality here. So nationality refers to, it's all about what is your national identity or citizenship? Like, where do you belong? That kind of factor. And uh, the nationality in this case would be where exactly do you reside? What is your residence in terms of that? So national people to watch it, it's it's your residence. That's the factor here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, you're welcome. So next comes the psychographic. So this is another 
terminology, probably we should all familiarize ourselves that psychographic segmentation, which intertwines two different words, psychology and demography, which becomes psychographic. So this involves lifestyle, social class, personality-based segmentation. So people's lifestyle, people's social class, people's personality-based segmentation. And marketers, they use different variables, like use these variables as well to identify or segment, separate the market. Um, for instance, in this next image, as we can see, these are two different um, products. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have Swatch is a watch and Swatch watches are popular, especially for the ones who are lover of active lifestyle, sporting activities and everything, hiking and biking, riding. Swatch is mostly popular for those of group of people who prefer active lifestyle. They, they love to go out, do all of these like, you know, physically challenging activities and everything. On the right hand side, you can see purely it's iconic, the brand Ferrari. And purely the target here, the psychographic segmentation, it's a lifestyle. Now, people who would actually buy a car, which is worth like, you know, three to $2 million, it only refers to that, that they are to the extreme of the class. They have that much of financial capacity that they can spend that much money. People who buy a Ferrari, it's not a necessity. Rather, it's about luxury. It's entirely about luxury. Uh, and yes, that's that's a lifestyle for many people. Yes, that's the sort of lifestyle. So based on people's lifestyle, and these are called psychographic because these are your innermost, your you know, feelings. And based on these psychographic characteristics, you can also differentiate your market into different categories. Okay, next comes behavioral segmentation. So behavior is the, the, the type of behavior the consumer demonstrates, all right? That is consumer's behavior. How do consumers behave? Or what are their regular habits? So behavior is mostly consumer's habits. What type of habit are they? Uh, and based on those habits as well, you can actually offer or you can put them into different segments. And some of these would be occasions, benefits, user status, user rates, loyalty status, readiness stage, attitude towards the product. So these are some, some aspects. Now, what, are, what is this? Free calls between midnight. Who can tell me what's happening in this image? catering to the night wolves I guess. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. Yes, it's catering to the night wolves, like the ones who will just turn into werewolves. Like, you know, like some people, they love to just, you know, spend time in the night and keep talking and keep talking. So it's a behavioral segmentation, right? Like, you know, people's behavior or habit, you know, what is their attitude towards the product? So this is like free calls during that time of the, of the, of the night. Another example is probably behavior. Show your Valentine how much you care. It's a Valentine Day ad. And what are they selling with this one? Engine oil. Selling engine oil. Selling engine oil. So as if your car is your Valentine, you are offering your Valentine a gift. And as precious as like, you know, uh, a Valentine gift and you're just offering that to your, your car. So it's an engine oil. And purely they are using that, that occasion, like Valentine Day. Okay, all right. During Valentine Day, everyone is, is uh, going to demonstrate a certain type of, of behavior. 
And let's use that. So using that as a segmentation variable as well. Next up. Um, now, these are the four generic ones. Sometimes you can have like multiple segmentation variables. Like, you know, in like, you know, there could be some, some of those could be like hybrid mix of different types. So some lifestyle magazines and everything, these are those type of thing. So Prism is a magazine, which is like, you know, it's a, it's a US based, it's a magazine, it's a lifestyle magazine, which has got a range of different, you know, target audience or segments that they offer. Like, you know, within the magazine, they have like lots of different types of like, you know, like things that users or readers from different groups will actually find. So this is like more like a matrix where you have all of these four different variables or four different segmentation variables, but these are the four main variables. Now we'll be diving um, Visiprism's um, you are where you live website. Anyway, if you are game enough, you can just jump into that. This was a slide, like an old one. So maybe it's still there. Business markets, all right? So when it comes to business markets, what are the segmentation variables <clears throat> or how do you segment the business market? First of all, demographic segmentation, that is easy. As you can understand, your industry, we all understand that there are different industries, right? Like banking industry, telecom industry, education industry, hospitality industry. Then you can look into the company size, whether it's a small SME, whether it's a large corporate, whether it's an individual business owner, you can look into the location of the business. Operating variables, okay? This is an interesting one. So some of the operating variables would be the ones that the business is using to operate the business. And that would involve their technology, their usage status, their customer capabilities. And these are the things. So what are the things that they need to operate the business? Purchasing approaches. How do they purchase? Based on that, you can segment. Now, when it comes to like, you know, as I mentioned, like when Brack University will buy, like, you know, recently Brack bought some bus for the students, right? So when Brack would buy, it will buy in large volume, probably 10, 20 together. When it will buy something, it will be in big volume. But if it's a small business, they'll probably just buy one or two. So depending on their purchasing approach, you can differentiate market. Uh, let me see if I have the explainer. Yeah. Sorry, no, I'll just skip into this one. Situational factors. Urgency, specific application, size of order. So these are more contextual based on some of the situational characteristics of the business. You can segment the business market, how urgent that they need the product um, the application, size of order, things like that. For instance, let's say in the garments, the ready-made garments manufacturing, you'll see that where the ready-made garments manufacturing businesses are, they're the biggest consumer of like, you know, threads, different types of threads, right? Because they need to buy those threads for sewing and for all of those knitting. So that's why they need to buy those from nearby shops and in large volume. So depending on what is this, their specific application and how frequently they will buy, that's another factor. And personal characteristics could be like personal, like buyer seller similarity, attitude towards risk, loyalty. These could also be other factors based on which you can segment the market. Like buyer seller similarity refers to what exactly are they selling? Um, maybe think about example, who can give me example of buyer seller relationship? Because my brain is now like towards in the downward side because as the clock goes, like it's 12, 
<laughs> my brain capacity is going downward where some of you are still up. But anyway, so buyer-seller similarity refers to how closely related the buyer and the seller is. For instance, let's say in automobile, if the buyer is uh, like tire, they buy only tires. The seller is like, you know, they're within the similar industry, but they sell different uh, parts, different uh, uh, spare parts. So that would be their relationship. Based on that, you can characterize your market. Uh, and other factors like, you know, some some buyers they are very loyal buyers so you can segment them based on okay these are our loyal buyers they will always be our top priority some could be in the priority list you can put them in the bottom because maybe they're not that loyal and things like that we have some other factors as well which we'll talk about segmenting international markets right sometimes international market is also something that needs to be considered and again some of those factors we can consider that geographic segmentation, again, simple uh, location of the region. Economic factors could be another new one that we can think when it comes to international market because the population's income or level of economic development. So these are more macro level factors or macro level segmentation. When a large brand, let's say Uber, Uber is going to launch in the Bangladesh market, right? Uber did not launch in Bangladesh market immediately. First, they, they were launched in US and then they slowly, they expanded into other countries. It took them many years until they reached to the Bangladeshi market. And predominantly the reason is the population's income, the economic development and everything. Because when Uber launched probably in the year, like, you know, meet uh, in 2010, 11, or, you know, during that time, at least at the, at the beginning, the market or the roads in Bangladesh was not at all ready to accept a service like that. But slowly with the technology, people are more you know, easy with apps and smartphones these days. So it's slowly evolving. So depending on some of those economic factors, you have to differentiate the market. Political and legal factors, of course, based on the political issues or the, the other aspects, you need to segment your market as well. The stability of the government, some monetary regulations, amount of bureaucracy and everything. Um, in many countries, um, you will find, in, like in, in Bangladesh, uh, buying a car, you have to buy a car paying almost 300% tax than the original price of the car. And the, 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 the reason why the government has adopted this policy, because in Bangladesh, taxation is still not that well structured. There are lots of people, they don't even pay tax. Even like, you know, the rich businessmen or some other people, because the taxation system in Bangladesh has not reached to that standard. So if government would allow everyone to buy car, left and right people would be like you know buying like you know probably the i mean my experience in bangladesh was like you know like the filthy rich people they live in bangladesh like there are some people they have so much money because there are of course some are adopting unfair means i'm not saying all of them but most of them they're so rich so anyway Depending on some of these factors, there will be there will be some considering consideration. Uh, some cultural factors, very interesting and of course necessary one because whenever you are thinking about international aspect, of course culture comes into play. What is the language? What is the religion? What is the values, attitude, customers, behavioral patterns? When we've talked about McDonald's, when they targeting like you know their burger beef burger obviously they wouldn't do it in the middle east uh, like you know the the hamburger maybe in the middle eastern market it will not sell they would not position their beef burger in the indian market it will not sell so depending on those factors you have to um, you need to have those considering considerations requirements for effective segmentation 
Okay, so this is something just to sum up all of the segmentation that we just discussed, that what are those requirements for effective segmentation? That is regardless of domestic or international, consumer market or business market, regardless of, of those, is that what are the aspects? First of all, your market should be measurable, right? There should be some measurable aspect like size, purchasing power, profile of the segment. So you should be able to quantify that. So that is really important. Uh, then comes accessible, can be reached and served. If you are segmenting your market, you should be able to reach to that market. That's really important. If you can't reach to the market, there's no point in segmenting them. Um, substantiality is also another factor because you know if you have a segment which is really small which is really very small that uh, you know you can't even reach so there's no point actually going to that that market so you have to be uh, mindful of that sorry just give me a minute please Okay, so as I was saying, uh, actionable, effective programs can be developed. So whatever you do, it should be actionable as well. How can you effectively develop the programs so that you can actually offer consumers what they want? Uh, so these are some of the key requirements for segmentation. So whatever you segment, you should be able to use these guidelines in order to effectively segment. So I hope we are all clear with the first step, which is segmenting. So segmenting is all about dividing the market into based on different characteristics, different variables. Now, considering factors are they will operate within a business to business market or business to consumer market. And further, you can also look into the international market that once you plan to expand into the international market, then that's also another considering factor. Go ahead, Aisha. Uh, segmentation is differentiable. Okay, they should be responding differently. I mean, obviously, the market or the segments that you are differentiating or the way you are separating them, they should be definitely have different responses. And this response means their reaction to your product, how they react to your product, that is important. For instance, let's say that, um, A product you are selling to different, let's say Toyota car, okay? Toyota car is something that is affordable. Now, Toyota has different types of cars. Some Toyota cars are more affordable, but they have some models which are a bit premium, like Lexus is a premium version of Toyota. So. It, you should be able to easily differentiate your product, all right? So when you're offering your product to different market, consumers should be able to differentiate and they will respond differently to that. So when people are buying, um, you know, um, something like uh, Lexus or something like that, it's they know that, yes, we are buying something which is much better than the general 
Toyota car. So there should be some differentiable element that you can easily differentiate from one segment to another. Does it make sense? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, now comes to the next step, which is target marketing. Evaluating market segments, segment size and growth. Once you know what is your segmentation, then you have to target market. That means target is, you know where is that you have to throw your arrow or where you have to just, you know, throw your, you know, whatever you're gonna throw at. So you have the specific target. Um, so segment size and growth, segment structural attractiveness, level of competition. So these are some of the other factors. Um, now, why have I used this image or what's the image refers to? This looks more like a bar back, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, does it symbolize his power? That's Burger King. As you can see, the logo is Burger King. So Burger King obviously is a fast food, right? We all know Burger King is a fast food, but this is, they are also targeting the ones that are after a healthy product as well. They're trying to claim that our fast food is not that unhealthy. Even the healthy people can eat burger and they can have like, you know, packs, like, you know, how many packs is there? Probably there's like, seven packs or something like that which is weird but still that's like a clever way to show their product so simply put targeting is about you know what is your segmentation and then you have your targeting so target marketing strategies targeting broadly or targeting narrowly these are two opposite extremes you have to keep in mind so broadly targeting means undifferentiated marketing, like a mass marketing. You are very broadly targeting specific group. Um, maybe again, coming back to Toyota, maybe when Toyota cars are being targeted for middle-class people, you are broadly targeting, okay? But from there, you can slowly narrowly target like differentiated like, you know, some Toyota cars, they're really small. You know, they're hatchback. They're really small Toyota cars. And this is for a small family. Some Toyota cars, they are for large families. You know, this is particularly for large families. You know, something like that. So within your product, you can either go for very targeted approach, or you can also have micro-marketing or micro-level or narrow target, targeting very narrowly. And there could be something in between, differentiated or concentrated. So target marketing is once you know your segmentation, then you simply aim to sell your products to them. And how you will do that, that's your target marketing approaches. Now there's seem a few things we need to keep in mind in target marketing. Choosing a target marketing strategy requires some consideration, some considering factors you need to keep in mind. Company resources, okay? So what is the company is capable of? How much resource the company has? That's obviously one important factor. I'm just trying to enlarge the font a little bit so that's more visible. So, the degree of product variability, how variable the product will be. Can you really segment your product? And, or if the segmentation is that different from one to another, if it's like, you know, for instance, Procter & Gamble or Unilever, they have multiple segments, but there could be some products or there could be some organizations whose product is not, very readily identifiable, like they're still not that segmented or fragmented. The consumers are not that fragmented. So in that case, what is the variability from one product to another? If your segments that you're trying to serve 
will not understand the difference from one to another one, then clearly you, you have not targeted your product well enough. Products life cycle stage. Now, this is a concept that we will be coming across or we'll be discussing in our uh, upcoming classes, but I'll just give you something in a nutshell that every product goes through different life cycle stages. From introduction is when the product is first time launched in the market, then the product goes to the growth stage when the product is growing slowly. Then it goes to the maturity stage when the product is mature, and then it goes to the decline phase. So decline is when the product is actually finished. So maybe we can use Apple's different model, right? Apple iPhone 12 or 13, introduction, recently launched, growth, slowly going, maturity, and then slowly decline. No one would buy nowadays Apple 11, right? Or iPhone, smartphone 11, or a few people like, you know, the ones that are heavy with pocket, maybe they will go for the up, 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 you know, the up end, not the down end. So depending on products life cycle, you can also target specific market. Market variability. Again, variability means how variable one market to another is. Uh, if you are, if your segmentation is age, let's say age is your segmentation variable and you are offering a product, let's say maybe uh, a shampoo to different age group, right? There should be some specific variability. What exactly, how variable from one to another one, right? Like if it's a kid's shampoo, then that's fine. It's different than anti-dandruff shampoo and kid's shampoo. Well, fine, you can easily understand that this shampoo is mild. It's not very chemical heavy. It is easy to use. And this is specifically for kids. And at the other end, you have anti-dandruff shampoo, which is help you to get rid of dandruffs. But if you have two shampoo, which is you're saying this is anti-dandruff shampoo and this is a general shampoo and there's not too much difference or the variable or, you know, the, you know, the, the, that way you're trying to tap the market um, is not variable or different substantially from one to another, then uh, your target marketing strategy would not work. Probably I can, I should go in a much broader context. I'm just giving a narrow example of just shampoo, but from one market to another that you're going to offer the product should have substantial variance from one to another. Otherwise, you are doing almost the same. You are trying to, you know, do almost the same approach from one segment to another, which may not work or backfire. Competitors' marketing strategies would also be another denominator of your target marketing, how strong your competitors are offering or targeting their product. And based on that, you also have to, um, you also have to um, target your product as well. So look, I'm, I'm actually giving you lots of information um, in one class, I know, but- it's okay, Taco <laughs> we we just need to go through this maybe we can have some follow-up discussion we because you know we do have to cover but it's easy look i mean it sounds a lot but it is actually easy it's not that heavy it's uh, it's something that you can easily understand so i'll, I'll try to finish quickly maybe next class we'll have some follow-up discussion but what i was just about to say is that you need to do lots of study by yourself so i'll be sharing the slide and also upload the recording as well so you can use some of your time to go through this otherwise it's going to be difficult All right last one i'm um, not going through more detail positioning and it's easy. We have talked about positioning before. Positioning is the place the product occupies. Okay, sorry. I have a pet situation in my room. 
<laughs> it's a, it's a small kitten that I recently bought from my daughter. So yes, sir, I see that. Oh, you saw that, yeah. So I'm, I mean, she is just somewhere here trying to play with my charger and everything. Anyway, uh, so positioning is simply how would you like to see yourself into com consumer's mind? Uh, typically defined by consumers on the basis of important attributes. Some of your attributes which will um, demonstrate who you are. What's the, what's the image here? Who can take a guess? And what does it say? I'll enlarge this one. Is it a car brand? Yes, it's a car brand. It's a Alfa Romeo. That's a that's a European brand. Alfa Romeo is a popular European brand, and uh, positioning zero. the brand, uh, you know, while the child is still in the womb, something like that. Yeah, well, it's 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 more than that. It's actually like an Alfa Romeo is as um yeah it's it's a i mean see different way we can perceive that in different ways like you know it could be very kids friendly we can think that it's very safe or it could be even a child or an unborn baby even knows what alpha romeo is even like you know an unborn child in its mother's womb would still learn or know what alpha romeo is so essentially the way it's positioning is is very different I've got another image and I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm using cars because I like cars. I like cars. So that's why maybe I, I'm using car brands. So product, like choosing a positioning strategy. How do you, um, how do you choose like, you know, your positioning and you can, you can identify possible competitive advantages, like, you know, products and services and channels and people and image. So these are the different strategies you can take. Now, this is another image probably I'll enlarge and uh, tell me what this image stands for. Who can tell me? This is another Thank brand, you. Land Rover. Eco-friendly technology. Yeah, Can very good the, one. Uh, brand? Yeah, that's what they trying to say that well, it's not only totally about being eco-friendly. It's like, you know, the like Land Rover cars, they this are car so... Can... Yeah, go ahead. The, I, I oh, sir, please they... continue. Yeah, and they can withstand uh, many situations. They can withstand many situations. They like, have... Even, if, if, even rough these areas, are... yeah, they can work in rough areas. Yeah, so these are two different types of tracks, right? One is like, you know, the urban location, like in the city. And this is more like, you know, hill tracks or, you know, mountains and jungles and everything. So they're both fighting, like, you know, for the car, like, you know, who can keep this car? So it means that this is an all-terrain vehicle, which could be like driven in every other terrain. Whether it's a city location, whether it is in like, you know, like, you know, these sort of, you know, natural locations as well. So clearly it's a positioning that our cars, they are so strong and sturdy that you can drive a Land Rover into any location, whether it's all terrain, whether it's a mountain, whether it's in the city, it could be driven anywhere. So simply, we can we can maybe highlight the services part for this ad. They're just like trying to show the service, how the Land Rover car is different when it comes to the service. So similarly, you can think about people. We can think about image. If we talk about image, well, this is about image positioning, right? Which brand is this one? Porsche. So Porsche is obviously another brand. And we all know Porsche is a luxury brand. Um, 
So Porsche simply is positioning is they are selling their car at a very high price. And they obviously know that the, our positioning is it's a high-end car. It's a quality car. It's a sports car. It's a performance car. And they know that people are willing to pay a very high price, hefty price for buying a car like this. And they know that. So that's about image. So depending on different factors, you will be doing this. Now, someone just sent me an email asking if I will have any group discussion. Since we already had a quiz exam, I know you're all like, you know, quite drained already, psychologically, intellectually. So I'll be not extending our class. I'll be just wrapping up today, right after this discussion. Okay, so there'll be no further group discussion or I would not extend the class um, for three hours. I'll just wrap it up in the next five minutes. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So positioning, choosing a positioning strategy, choosing the right competitive advantage. How many differences to promote unique selling proposition, position errors to avoid, which differentiate differences to promote? So when you want to position yourself or your brand into the consumer's mind, choose the right competitive advantage. How or which is the difference that you want to promote into consumer's mind? Yes, Naim. Sir, uh, in the last slide, sir, how can be channel will be used as, posi uh, as positioning? Can you give an example? Yeah, sure. Simple. Online. Online and offline. Your positioning is eBay. We know eBay as an online brand, right? We know eBay will never have a shop. They don't, you don't have an eBay shop where you will go and buy. eBay want them to be a virtual business, and that's their channel of business. So channel refers to the way the product is being delivered to the consumers. And you can position yourself based on that. Some products, they are very, very app oriented or technology oriented. You can buy their product. And some are very much, you know, they have retail store, they have wholesale store, they are getting close to the consumers. So that's a sim simple example as that. Okay, sir. Okay. So last couple of slides, positioning criteria for meaningful differences. So these are some positioning criteria. How do you want to position your product? Important, superior, preemptive. What is preemptive? Who can tell me? Lower grade of uh, the society, I guess. What? Sir. So I don't know the literal meaning, but preemptive in share market use, like if one has already shared and mm -hmm. then if the company launches shares in the stock market, then the existing shareholder will get lose the right of preemptive share, something like that. Okay, so it's right. like what, what, what is the literal meaning of the word? So it's about preempting some, something might happen, right? Something has, hasn't happened yet, it might happen. And you can actually positioning, you can position your brand uh, based on that or based on some of those factors. So even before something that has not happened, but this product will give, give you that sort of, you know, like um, appeal when you buy. So in many ways, we can say some of the luxury goods gives people that preemptive feelings that I'm rich, I'm successful. When you wear a watch, like a Rolex or something like that. Yes, it is superior. Or at the same time, it's, it's a positioning. It's, it's preemptive into people's mind as well. When you, you will 
where this sort of thing it is gives people a notion of your success or your um, uh, caliber who you are so some of these preemptive factors could also be in your mind that people readily do not perceive that but you're creating that image into people's mind with your positioning distinctive it's very separate it's communicable easily communicate it could be communicated quite easily affordable profitable you need to do some study by yourself so i am just briefly orienting this maybe in the next class we can have follow-up discussion before we commence our next topic possible value propositions so depending on benefits and price this is just like a matrix that shows like you know possible value proposition and this is a positioning like you know technique like you know if you see price and benefits as the two different continuum or two different axes so maybe more for more more for the same more for the less and more for more so it's all about price and benefit some product we can we can just put different products into these categories some products they give us more with the lower price but some products they give us more with more price or higher price some product they give us less for the least amount of price and some products are in the middle so you have to put yourself into this positioning map. So in a way, it's actually a positioning map where you like to plot yourself the where exactly your brand should be located. Where could consumers find? Less for much less. That's some products or some brands, their strategy is like that. Less for much less. Uh, like you want to go as less as possible so this is like a possible value proposition like you know matrix so maybe just last one this quickly reflection so what's the positioning here sir i kind of positioning the whole procedure before shake up the a monkey not on team on the roots on track so, after our razor, something like that. Like, I said, extra but the thing is that it gives value to the customers. Did you just say monkey to those who have beard? No, sir. It's uh, the hair, uh, the picture reflects monkey. Yeah. So, yeah, anyone with beard would like to share what their thoughts are? I feel personally attacked. <laughs> well, I have longer beard than you, so <laughs> I'm also in the same. But uh, in your jokes apart, obviously, this one is the positioning is like brown. It's the shaver, like it's a shaver brand. So this shaver, brown shaver, is something you, it, it will bring the human back inside you. This product is so accurate and so great in quality, it will bring the human back in, in you. And it's a, it's a great positioning that it's a top quality, you know, it's, it's a great, uh, you know, product. And uh, as you can see, like, um, the ad also is very creative, like that's 8 a.m., and that's 8.05 a.m., like time. Like this was who you are at eight o'clock and after just after five minutes using brown, this is who you will become. So that's just like a fun example, but there are lots of ways, you know, we can position our self into the consumer's mind. So with this one, guys, I have a couple of more slides choosing a positioning strategy I'm not talking about this anymore, leaving it for you to explore. As soon as I'm done with the class, you will... Um, uh, okay, so I will have to send the slides to you. Maybe I'll just use the chat screen now so that you all have access to it now. Yeah, Naim, go ahead. 
স্যার ওই প্রিএমটিভ পজিশনিং এর একটা एग्जांपल দিলে ভালো হতো স্যার ওকে সো ইয়া আই উইল বি অলসো আপলোডিং দ্য স্লাইডস ইন দ্য মিন টাইম সো ইউ অল ক্যান গেট ইট এন্ড আই উইল অলসো গিভ ইউ দ্য एग्जांपल অ্যাজ ওয়েল So, okay, all right. So while I do this, so look, preemptive positioning is like who you will become once you use this product, right? So the essence is like, you know, it's a way to, there's one type of product in marketing, it's called, or uh, one type of demand, it's called a latent demand. A latent demand is something that is, not yet there but you are creating that demand okay it's called a latent demand so preemptive positioning follows that latent demand where uh, who you will become in the future that's what your product is going to demonstrate your product is going to be something like this i'm trying to think of examples um Okay, so maybe if I give an exam, maybe it will be like there are some Indian education ed tech pl platform that actually shows the in their advertisement that if if your son or daughter enroll in this platform, he will be an engineer, he will be a scientist. Yeah, it's a very good example. It's a very good example. It's something that's, like that? Yeah, that's like that. Then we can also talk about insurance product, like life insurance product. When you die, you will get lots of benefits. Take our insurance product. After your death, you'll get lots of benefits. So it's a preemptive positioning. You will think, oh, okay, all right, this insurance is safe. So when I die, I will really get lots of money for my family and they will be safe. So in a way, it's actually a preemptive situation where you're preempting that, well, this product is going to give me service. Or a very good example is Brack University itself. We can think about Brack graduates. Like, you know, why are you even doing MBA in Brack University? And um, why not into other institutions? Because you know that Brack University is obviously in terms of quality. Brack University is definitely top of the class. So that's a preemptive positioning in a way as well. We can, we can relate this one as well. So I guess that is, is that clears up the doubt? So is, is it clear? Could I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. yes, sir. All right. So I'm just about to share the slide link with all of you so that you all have access. And once I'm done, I will be sharing the, like, you know, the recording gets uploaded maybe tomorrow. Hopefully the record version will get updated. So you'll have access to that. So look, I mean, I think that's for our today's class. Now there's something that I really want you to think as well is how do you position yourself? It's really important. Um, like the brands, every brand, they have their own positioning. It's, it's something that's really important that how do we see ourselves as, we can also think about positioning at our personal level as well. It's really important that we as individuals, we have our own personal uh, positioning. Uh, so, how do you brand yourself? How do you position yourself? Because, and again, I'm going to probably, yeah, this is a good opportunity to do a bit of advertisement of my own stuff. And it's not advertisement, it's more of a, 
more of a, I guess the reason I do this is to inspire younger generation like uh, you guys is that I, as some of you know, Jami, YouTube, YouTube, able to take to wish, uh, to use my, some of my downtime really in order to, I guess, inspire my students and everything. And one of the things that I tell my students is that how to see yourself as a brand, right? You are a brand. You present yourself as a brand. You're getting education from one of the top educational institutions in Bangladesh. When it comes to getting a job, you should be the top ones in the country when it comes to getting a job because you're spending the most amount of money from more number of people. So definitely when it comes to presenting yourself, you need to present yourself in a way as well. You need to have your positioning at a top level as well. That's really, really important. But how do you create your brand positioning, your personal brand? That's something that's really important. So I'm going to share a link of my recent video that I was talking about this. Now, uh, it's in Bangla, so except Lamin, everyone else will understand. So apologies, Lamin, you wouldn't understand. Unless you have learned some Bangla, it might help you a bit. But if not, um, yeah, this is more about how do you create your own brand. And this is, by the way, my personal YouTube channel. So I'll be more than happy to see you subscribing to that. So you can see some regular videos and stuff uh, like that. What's the link? Sir, Bangla, Bangla video go the subtitles me. What? Sir, Say again? Your Bangla videos, are there no subtitles? Uh, no, I didn't do any subtitles. Probably I should do that. I, thought I, show my, I, I don't invest that much of time yet. This is just like a hobby thing that I do. So probably I should do it, but you know i haven't uh, done that to that level but um, maybe i should do that as well in in future but i do have one um, channel which is of uh, i have an e-learning academy where i have lots of you know like stuff updated recently it's on data and uh, research and everything so I'll share that link as well with you. Um, you know, this is just like a hobby project that um, I do to utilize some of my times. So here's another one where you'll see some English contents as well. So maybe Lamin can look at this one. But again, again, this is purely educational. So uh, just referring back to the previous discussion, as I was saying, that positioning, how do you position yourself? That's really important. So just taking my discussion out of the class now, I'll be stop recording.